Are you self-sabotaging? Are you working so hard at manifesting, but everything you do is going backwards? No matter what you do, what you say, you feel like nothing's working. Could it just simply be self-sabotage? It actually can, and we sabotage ourselves a lot. We use one word, one phrase, and we are constantly throwing it out there that sabotages us. The biggest phrase is, I can't say that word. I can't do that. It's not working. Manifesting doesn't work. I'm doing all the tips, the techniques, and the tools, but nothing's changing. Those are the biggest self-sabotages. But then there is the self-sabotage where you reject it because you won't say one word. You won't say that you see it's happening. You won't say, I have proof it's happening. You won't even say anything to the effect of, it's now coming to me. And all of those things are what helps you to bring a fish in. You throw your line out into the water, you catch the fish. You gotta work that reel to bring that fish in. And words are what brings it in. But instead, we sit there and go, oh, I can't do that. Let's see if there's ways that we can avoid self-sabotage. Because self-sabotage is really you rejecting whatever it is you desire. But first, this is Susie, your beautiful swan queen. Welcome back to the garden, my beautiful duckling. Thank you for subscribing, smashing the like button, sharing my video. I love you. I am the best life coach with a 99.6% success rate in helping people get together with the love of their life. When you are interested in working with me one-on-one, joining my paid Facebook group, upscaling your money, buying t-shirts from my daughter and her bestie, the links are in the description below. If you want a lazy way of manifesting, you can get a subliminal. I have some pre-made as well as some I can custom make for you. You listen to them, you say it works, and bam, you get everything you desire. We don't really do that, though. Instead, obsessed is the perfect word to use here. Oh, my specific person is obsessed with me. And manifesting community, some people say use it, some people say don't. I'm one of those people who say don't because you could turn it into a toxic relationship by being obsessed. But people will say, oh, I can't say that word. I can't say the word obsessed. I can't say the word begging. He's begging to be with me. Well, then you have to find another word that shows you so you stop self-sabotaging. If I want proof of something, I have to ask for proof. When you are praying to God, you don't, you go, oh, dear God, please, please, if you find it in your heart of hearts, let me marry this person. God's going, well, I don't think that person's really good for you, so I'm just going to keep sending you a whole bunch of other people, and I'm going to make this guy do a bunch of bad things to you, and then eventually you're just going to throw your hands up in disgust, and you're going to go with the guy that I should go with because, you know, manifesting says this or something better, and I have something better for you, and you go down this whole road. Well, I saw this post. This person did self-love, and they got their person back, and I don't understand how they did it. Because they gave a reason why their person came back. I did self-love. I worked on my self-concept. And my specific person showed up better than I imagined. I worked on me. I did what I, I had to do to heal me. I got healthy and I got the job of my dreams. Because I worked on me, I got my dream job. Because I worked on me, I got my specific person. Every single post, I can tell you exactly why they are getting their desire, why they're not getting their desire. So I understand you don't like words like obsessed or begging. Fine. But you have to ask for proof to stop self-sabotaging yourself. So you want a job at a certain company. You want to make a certain dollar amount. I live in the show me state. 
And the show me state says, show me the money, show me the specific person, show me the job, show me the car, show me the house, show me whatever it is that I want. Okay, so I want a Camaro and I want a black Camaro. The picture I had had blue stripes and chrome, uh, black, chrome, uh, black rims. I got shown a Camaro. This one is a convertible top with chrome. It has leather seats, a touch screen. It's actually better than I imagined it to be, minus my blue racing stripes. Like I can go put those on real easy. I just go to somebody and I pay them and they'll put the blue racing stripes on. Not a big deal. It's something I can easily fix. But all the bells and whistles that I got and the extra made my car better than I imagined. But that doesn't work in a relationship. Because if you're walking around going, oh, I get this relationship better than I imagined, but it's hot and cold, but I'm blocked, but he's not answering my texts, but he's with a third party, but she's doing, you know, she's, she's in a relationship. She's living with somebody else. You know, I'm the love of her life, but she's going to have kids with this person. And then what am I going to do? She's going to marry this person. Now, what do I do? You're giving them a job to do. That is what manifesting is. You're giving your specific person a job to do and you're rejecting them by giving them the job of ignoring you, of ghosting you, of being hot and cold. So that is something you need to work on. Why are you really rejecting this relationship? Why are you rejecting the money? Why are you rejecting the job, the car, the house, the friends, the family, the traveling? What is it about this that you are afraid of? Because I've given you knowledge, I've explained to you how, so the only other possibility is a fear. So you fail at manifesting because you don't have the knowledge, you don't know how to do it, or you're afraid of something. If you get this, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? You lose it. So if you lose it, you have to manifest it back. Oh, there's another self-sabotaging thing. Oh, I have to get them back. I have to get them back. If you have to get them back, that means they left. But here's the catch. I am sitting on my couch. I'm sitting cross-legged on my couch. And my specific person walks out the door to go to work. Oh, I have to manifest him coming back home tonight. Because he might not come back home. He lives here, but he might not come back home tonight. I have to manifest he doesn't talk to uh, opposite sex. People of the opposite sex. Because, you know... He has a roving eye, and if he has a roving eye, he might talk to somebody, and he might not come back. We're going, the what if something goes wrong? What if we have a problem? What if there's an issue? What if I have a fear, a block, a belief? Oh, now I have to reprogram my subconscious. Instead of, pick one thing. Pick one thing right now. What's one thing? And I want you to spend the next 30 days and not say anything negative about that one thing. So if the negative pops up in your head, because self-sabotage, the negative pops up in your head and you have this chatty Cathy mind that is always going, oh, well, you know, you're not going to get that. That's not going to happen. Oh, dream on, pipe dream. You can tell your, your mind, no, you don't create my reality. My thinking, what's said inside my head doesn't create my reality. My spoken words create my reality. You want to silence your mind? Oh, I only have 10 or 15 thoughts a day and they empower my life. I was taught that at age five. I only have 10 or 15 thoughts a day and they empower my life. I have somebody who's been telling her negative thoughts. No, you do not serve me. Go away. And her mind is getting quieter and quieter. And she's not used to this quiet mind. Nobody is. Unless you live in this, you don't have any idea what this feels like to be quiet. So now it's foreign to you. But what if you started saying, you know what? My mind is chatty Kathy. And it tells amazingly wonderful stories that empowers my life. What if your mind is your chatty Kathy cheerleader and it's cheering you on? 
but you have to say this out loud constantly and you will have to continue to say this constantly but then let's go back to manifesting a bunch of people tell you oh you got it you don't have to say anything and i use the house analogy for this you come home and you're in a bad mood and you see your house and you're like wow this is so beautiful i love my house this is my happy place like i can let my hair down and i could just be happy because that's what us girls do I don't know exactly what a guy would say, but he pulls into his garage and he garage door closes behind him and he might go, thank God I'm home. Like, this is my happy place. I'm glad I'm home. And he walks in the door. The wife is in tears. The kids are in chaos. The house is a disaster. And he goes, oh, great. This just, this is just awful. Tomorrow, he comes home from work. He pulls in the garage and he closes the garage door and he goes, I hope it's not chaos again. Walks in the house, the wife is in tears, the kids are creating chaos, the house is a mess. He comes home day three, it's Wednesday, comes home from work, same thing. Thursday comes home from work, same thing. Friday comes home from work, same thing. So now five days in a row he's come home. So he starts going, I hate going home. I hate going home. There's so much chaos and turmoil. My, my house is just, just, it's awful. It's awful. Well, now all of a sudden, a sink starts leaking. A toilet starts running. Um, you get a crack in your drywall in the ceiling. The roof starts leaking. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is a money pit. Like my house is just sucking my money dry. I can't get ahead because every time I get money, my house is taking the money. You have a relationship with your house that turned bad. And now all of a sudden the house is chaos and a money pit. And in order to get out of that, you have to go back to, oh my God, I love my house. My house is so amazing. It is my happy place. It is my sanctuary. It's so peaceful when I'm at home. Life is amazing. When I close that door to the garage and I walk into my house, it's amazing. It's wonderful. This is our happy place. And I'm going to walk in. My wife is going to be happy. My kids are going to be happy. And the house is going to be beautiful. And it's going to be peaceful and warm and inviting. And it's just our happy place. You're going to change that completely around. Every time I walk through the door of my apartment, I literally walk through the door and I close the door and I say, I'm home. I love you. Thank you so much for taking care of me. I think that every time I come through the door, every time I leave, I say, bye, I'll see you in a little bit. If my neighbors hear me, they probably think I'm silly. But I also do the same thing with my cars. Because when something goes wrong with my car, I go into panic mode. I, I literally go into panic mode. So then I sit there and I say, you know what? I have a great car. My car is wonderful. I had a 97 Chrysler Sebring. And the only thing I had to do to that Sebring was fix a battery, which was major panic mode because they put the battery behind the front driver's tire. She had to take off the tire to put the battery in. So when the battery died, kept dying, I couldn't get anybody to fix it. I finally called a friend in tears who worked in the automotive section at Walmart. She went to one of the managers and I used to work with both of these people and she told them what was going on and she called me back and said, Caleb said to bring it in. If we can't do it at the store, he'll do it for you at his shop. I'm like, okay, great. So I took my car in, they fixed it. The next issue I had with my car was belts. It's a 97, it needed new belts. Not big deals to have new belts and a new battery. Not a big deal. My car is amazing, it's wonderful. It, it treats me amazing. I traded her in because the cigarette lighter wasn't working. And when I was trading it in, the guy was like, we could get you something really nice. And I'm like, we could get you something better. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with my car other than the cigarette lighter doesn't work. Well, no, we can get you something better. My car had 97,000 miles on it and it ran great. But me, being a child, wanted to be able to plug in my cell phone and play it through the radio, be able to use my GPS map on the 
touch screen to be able to get where I'm going, traded it in for a cigarette lighter and a radio. That's it. I upgraded my car to get something nicer. But when we're self-sabotaging, we do things like, oh, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And that is the relationship we have. We don't have that relationship with our best friend. We don't have that relationship with certain family members. But think about the family member you dread seeing every holiday season. Like you're gonna to go to the family barbecue for the 4th of July in the US here in a couple of months. And you're like, I don't wanna to go to the family barbecue because this person's gonna be there. I know somebody who misses out on every family event because this person and his sister doesn't get along, so he won't go to the family events. So the parents bring him food from whatever family event afterwards. And sometimes the food gets left with me because it's one of my neighbors. And then when he, I, get, I text him, hey, I got your food, mom and dad left for you. And he comes and gets it later. It's not a big deal. But we deny ourselves because we're telling a story about why we're not getting something. And instead of, I'm not getting this because blah, 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 try, I'm seeing evidence. I'm seeing evidence that the universe is conspiring in my favor. I'm seeing it's happening that the universe is conspiring in my favor. I'm seeing that good things are being delivered to me. Try a list. Make a list of 20 things, just 20 random things. It could be a yellow car. It could be bluebirds. It could be ladybugs. Um, it could be you want to see a woman with long red hair. You want to see a guy with chiseled abs. You want to see a rainbow. Make a list. And these things are random, crazy things to make a list of. But make a ra crazy, random list of 20 things. And then right on the, that list, I see these things. I see these things. You don't have to carry the list with you. But what I want you to do is I want you to get up in the morning and I want you to look at this list and go, I'm going to see something. I'm going to see something on this list today. I'm going to see something on this list today. At the end of the day, I want you to come home and I want you to check off what you saw. If you didn't see anything today, I want you to still do it again tomorrow morning. But when you go and you look at your list and go, I didn't get anything on this list today, go, but that's okay because I'm going to get everything on this list. I didn't get anything yet. But that's okay because I'm going to get everything on my list. Write it underneath there. But I'm going to get everything on my list. Tomorrow, look at the list and say, I'm going to see something on this list today. Come home, look at your list. Did you get anything on that list today? If you did, check it off. You just saw something on your list. And I literally just saw a yellow car out of the corner of my eye. Literally. Just turn the corner, yellow car. That's how easy it is. I wanna see a ladybug. I actually have two on my balcony. So I just saw a ladybug. But that doesn't count, people are going to say. That's not true. I didn't specifically say I have to see a ladybug, the actual physical bug. So I saw a yellow car. Oh, but it's not a Camaro. I didn't say a yellow Camaro, I said a yellow car. So I saw a yellow car. Think about it. What are you seeing? It was actually a yellow Hummer. What are you seeing? What are you saying you're seeing? Think about this. In order to get out of self-sabotage, you have to say, I stopped sabotaging myself. And because I did, I'm now getting everything I desire. I don't believe I'm going to get my manifestation, but it's now being brought to me. I see it's being brought to me. And you see that somebody mentions a yellow car. That's a yellow car. You saw something and this person that you saw was talking about a yellow car. And you go, oh, but that's, that's not, that's not, no, 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 but it doesn't matter. 
I saw somebody talking about a yellow car. I didn't say I had to physically see the car. I just said yellow car. So I see somebody talking about a yellow car. I see somebody talking about a ladybug. I see a ladybug on a t-shirt or uh, there is a grocery store in our town that had ladybugs on their um, reusable grocery bags. That's a ladybug. We discount those for various silly reasons and we have to stop. Instead, don't question it. So you saw a ladybug and you go, oh, but that's on my balcony. That doesn't count. Instead, I saw a ladybug. I'm not sure if that counts, so show me another one that's off of my balcony. So you're scrolling through Facebook, tick, tick, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and you see a ladybug. Oh, there's a second ladybug you saw, and you're like, yeah, I don't know if that counts. Well, that's not on your balcony. So it counts. So then you say, well, no, I really need to see a ladybug. So you go grocery shopping. And while you're at the grocery store, you go to the plant section. And in the plant section, they have these little stakes that stick in your plants. And one of them's a ladybug. And you go, oh, yeah, no, that doesn't count either. That's self-sabotage. Instead, I saw one on my balcony. I saw one on Facebook. I saw one at the grocery store. Now I saw a car and it's a Volkswagen bug and it's decorated like a ladybug. Oh, wow, I've seen ladybugs everywhere. And then the next thing you know, you're actually seeing the little teeny tiny ladybug bird. I used to have little ladybugs that went with my orchids. And I had to put them away because Ophelia was playing with them and losing them and they were so tiny. And then I would find them and then Chance got a little bit bigger so he could swallow them and we can't have that. So I put them in a Ziploc bag and I put them away. So I go in my junk drawer because, you know, growing up in the Midwest in Chicago, we had a junk drawer. And they're in a little Ziploc baggie in my junk drawer with little, butter, with little butterfly clips that also go on there. But I put them away because of the kids. So I run across those. Oh, heck, I saw a ladybug. I'm not rejecting because it wasn't something I wasn't specific about. You want a free cup of coffee and you're going through the line and somebody gets a free cup of coffee and you're like, I never get a free cup of coffee. You're saying, I want a free cup of coffee, but I don't get free coffee. I'm saying I always get free coffee because people know I run out of coffee. I got cold coffee. A container of cold coffee and cream and I can make my own now I have a bag of ice a container of cold coffee and cream it was gifted to me so it's free coffee you have to start giving reasons to change the self-sabotage because your reasons silence your mind they cause your mind to stop doubting resisting or making up negative stories. So simply start saying, I'm seeing. Or show me today a yellow, a yellow car. Show me today a ladybug. Show me today a person wearing a pink dress. Show me today a guy wearing a green suit. Show me today a leprechaun. Those little things build faith. So if you can make a list of 20 non-sequential things, nonsense things, and get all 20 of those things, now make a list of 20 things that you would like. Do not put on there a text message from my specific person, a date from my specific person, no contact broken from my specific person, unless you are going to say, I see that this is happening. I see evidence that he's broken no contact. I see evidence he's texting me. I see evidence he's taking me out on a date. Because if you just literally write this stuff on your list and go, I'm not getting what's on my list, you're back to self-sabotage. You literally have to say over and over and over again, I get everything on my list easily in a fun way. So 
if you put breaking no contact easily in a fun way, your specific person is going to break no contact because you're saying, I get everything on my list. I see I get everything on my list. I said this years ago when I started my channel in 2019. You have to to say manifesting works and you have to ask for proof that you're getting it. If you're not getting proof that you're getting it, how do you see it's changing? Oh, that's right because you know there's movement behind the scene. Well, I can't see what's going on behind the scene and I'm impatient and I'm frustrated and I'm angry and now I just sabotage myself. That's how fast it happens. That is literally how fast it happens. So start asking for proof. Start saying you're seeing it. Start writing things down and checking them off so you build confidence that you can easily manifest your dream life. Rome wasn't built in a day. A relationship that lasts 50 years takes 18,262 days to work on. So manifesting is the same way. It takes daily work to get it to work in your favor. And because you are now a conscious creator, you can't go back to sleep. You have to focus on this is working. You're seeing proof. Evidence is being brought to your attention that shows you that this is working in your favor. And you use your words to silence your mind and to focus forward. My negative thoughts don't create. My spoken words do. My negative thoughts are no longer negative. They're now empowering my life. They're telling me stories about what if this goes good? What if this goes better than you could ever imagine? What if this person shows up better than you could ever imagine? What if this job turns out to be better than you imagined? I hate this or something better because that translates into all of your physical relationships with people. You're manifesting your better relationship with your mother and you go, I want a better relationship with my mother or something better. It's your mother and you want something better than a relationship with your mother. So now your best friend comes in and your best friend's relationship is better than yours and your mother's. It didn't change your mother's relationship with you. So something better wasn't your best friend because you wanted a better relationship with your mother. You're manifesting a specific person and this person is the love of your life. And another person comes in and they're treating you the way they want your specific person to treat you. And you're going, but I still want this person. That's not better. That's making you feel worse. This, this or something better works when you say, I want a million dollars and you get $10 million. That's something better. I asked for a million and I got 10. But when it comes to people, there's a reason you want a relationship with this person. And you have to talk about why it's getting better and better. Why is your relationship with your mom getting better and better? Because you ignored you told the thoughts in your head, the, the thinking in your head, you no longer create my reality. My spoken words do it because my spoken words do. My relationship with my mother is getting better and better every day. And then when you talk to your mom, say it out loud. Say it out loud. Mom, I'm so grateful our relationship just keeps getting better and better. You are talking to your specific person. Say it out loud. I am so glad our relationship just keeps getting better and better. I tell my kids, I am so glad that I have a great relationship with you. I'm so glad that our relationship just keeps getting better and better. I prayed for this for years and now I'm seeing the results of it. So I am constantly putting it out there. My relationship with my kids get better and better every day. My relationship with myself is getting better and better every day. My life is getting better and better every day. I'm seeing that it's getting better and better every day. That's how I've changed it from being in a toxic marriage to where I am sitting today. That doesn't mean you're not gonna have issues, problems that come up. It just means you have to consciously work to stop self-sabotaging yourself, give reasons why you are being shown what you want is on its way or already here. 
Jim Carrey says, turn around and say, it's here, it's here, it's here. You want your specific person to knock on your door, you got to say, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's knocking on my door. It's that simple. I know it can be frustrating. And I know you think it's not that simple. But if you said, even though I'm frustrated and I'm not seeing it's that simple, I'm still going to get everything I want because I'm using my words to consciously create my life. And I am now seeing proof that my words are actually being spoken out loud, are bringing whatever I desire to me. It's a mouthful, but I promise you, if you say it, it'll work. I love you guys. You have an absolutely positively amazing day. And as always, leave me a comment and let me know how I am drastically changing your life for the better. If you got this far in the video, Jason made the post, Travis found the donor, and he's cured from his cancer. We're so excited. If you want to be the match, you want to help save somebody's life, check out bethematch.org. I do have the link in the description below if you're unsure of it. You can go to Google and Google it, and they will give you the actual link as well. Have an absolutely positively amazing day, and as always, I love you.